a TMC headline for December 6th. Arthur Sainer's stage play, The Burning Out of 82, will be turned into a major motion picture for Magnus Films. The story is about an 80-year-old literary genius who can't face his own mortality. The Movie Channel salutes Robert Osborne, nominated for the 1988 Ace Award. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne for The Movie Channel. Let's talk movies and let's talk some money. In the world of movies, just as in most businesses, money talks. In Hollywood, as much as any business you can name judges success based pretty much on how much money a film or a star or an executive makes. This past summer, four movies, according to Hollywood, are great successes. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Crocodile Dundee 2, Coming to America, and Big. All of them have joined a very small but elite group of movies. Those that have grossed $100 million or more at the box office, just in the U.S. and Canada. Now, it may surprise you, maybe not, that any one or all of those particular four films would rise to such heights, especially since less than two dozen movies in the whole history of film have ever grossed that much. And it may surprise you, <laughs> it certainly does me, that among the less than two dozen top money-making films of all time, there's no Gone with the Wind, no Sound of Music, no Casablanca or Snow White. To go even further, there's not even one film on that list with Cary Grant or Humphrey Bogart or Clint Eastwood, None with Barbara Streisand or Betty Davis or Fred and Ginger. None by Hitchcock or John Huston. But there are five films on that list starring Harrison Ford and four directed by Steven Spielberg. 18 of the top 20 moneymakers were made in the 1980s. None of them was made before 1975. Right now, number one on the list is E.T. The next three are the Star Wars films, and that's kind of the sort of film that dominates the whole list. Science fiction epics and adventure dazzlers. Big budget movies geared for the kids, but also very entertaining matinee fun for the older crowd. For a movie to turn a profit in today's movie market, the kind of general rule of thumb is that a film must gross two and a half times what it costs to produce. Now, the average cost of making a movie today is about $17 million. So if a movie costs $20 million, using that rule of thumb, it has to make $50 million just to break even. So you can see why producers keep trying for the brass ring, hoping to get into that $100 million fraternity. And is there any way to guarantee a hit? There's no way. For every Steven Spielberg hit, he's also made a 1941 or an Empire of the Sun that kind of throws a curve. But judging from the films that have made it, one's chances of making a mega hit are much better if you aim your movie for the eye rather than for the head, and if you play it for gasps rather than for anything serious. And most important, you must make a movie people will pay to see a second time, and a third time, maybe even a tenth time. That's how you get the really big grosses. People can love Gandhi or The Last Emperor, but if they won't pay to see it several times, it'll never make the list of top, top grocers. And another key, serve hamburger rather than prime steak. Sad to say, but most of today's moviegoers only seem to want the fast food movies rather than anything more nourishing. And that's what movie makers are falling over each other to serve them. And that's not likely to change, you know, not until several of those nourishing films makes it into that elusive fraternity of top, top grossing films. It hasn't happened yet. I'm Robert Osborne for the Movie Channel. The location is Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The film is Everybody's All American. An epic love story from Taylor Hatford, director of White Knights, Against All Odds, and an officer and a gentleman. Starring Jessica Lange, Dennis Quaid, Timothy Hutton, and John Goodman. Gavin Gray is the star running back. Babs Rogers is the beauty queen. Together, they tell a love story that spans three decades. I think what this story is about is the power and endurance of love, you know, and the fact that these two people have this kind of love for each other. The year is 1956. As Babs Rogers, Jessica plays the perfect Southern Belle, living in an age of innocence, surrounded by friends and admirers, and the man she will always love. A lot of Babs has to do with dreams and fantasies, I think. Things that she expected her life to be. She's someone who grew up in the South, who kind of came to age in the 50s with all that morality. She starts off 
living out all her dreams and fantasies and then along the way you know she's she encounters a lot of disappointments and a lot of frustrations and what happens is that she has to become someone she never imagined that she was going to going to be in her life i'm a draw rod here not like when you were homecoming queen back in where was it louisiana i was magnolia queen most of us are the queen of something now we're just players wives I've had a lot to love in my life, but because of you, I am the luckiest man that ever lived. Everybody's All-American. You know, I love to hear stories like that about, you know, did you hear about Chevy Chase, they say he can't even leave his house. I mean, I heard that one once. I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life. But, uh, you know, he can't even leave his house. What does that mean? He's trapped on the stairs or something? Or what? He's under the bed, a mattress fell on him. He can't... But, um, no, you just get lazier and lazier. And, uh, you know, it's hard to get going again. I mean, when I did Scrooge, it took me weeks to get back into it, you know? I mean, I was sort of doing it and sort of doing it, but I wasn't really sharp at all. I was really sloppy. And usually just before lunch, there's a big shot right before lunch. And they like to get it so they can turn it around on the lunch break. It makes everybody's lunch a little longer, you know. It means if you get that, it means it's much easier. The lighting changes everything. And for two and a half, three weeks, I blew the take right before lunch. And they just go, no, that's okay, Bill. Let's go eat. Maybe, maybe that'll help. You know, so... I wasn't amusing anybody for a few weeks there. In 1855, one American set out to conquer a Central American nation. It is the God-given right of the American people to dominate the Western Hemisphere. Nicaragua is my country. As long as I am needed here, I will never leave. Marley Matlin and Ed Harris as Walker. Playing Monday on the Movie Channel. On the other side of drinks, dinner, and a one-night stand lies a terrifying love story. This is gonna stop. No, it's not gonna stop. It's gonna go on and on. She keeps calling me apart. Hello. I'm scared, Jimmy. Glenn Close, Michael Douglas, Ann Archer. Fatal Attraction. Premiering Friday on the Movie Channel. It's probably to um, escape from reality a little bit, have something to talk about a lot have things to think about, new ways to look at things.
Hey. <laughs> You ain't going nowhere. Ah! Damn you, little sucker. Some more TMC news. Marlon Brando will have to wait until next fall to star in Jericho. Because of an undisclosed delay, a replacement is being sought for director Donald Kamel, who has another commitment. Here's a preview of a movie playing in theaters now. There's something afoot. A mystery so devious, a secret so startling. Only one man can be trusted. A man they called... You idiot! Dr. Watson concealed it. He was an actor. Unfortunately, he was also a gambler. There's a little matter of a gambling debt. A womanizer. Me! Oh! <laughs> Did it again. And a drunkard. He's been at it again. Mrs. Hudson knew about it. I never liked that woman. Inspector Lestrade suspected it. <laughs> Moriarty used it. I have killed as many as six men in a week. And Reginald Kincaid... Eight, if you count matinees. ...played Sherlock for all he was worth. This is a matter for professionals. Watch it. There's an evil mastermind behind all of this. Moriarty! Are you sure he's not trying to kill me? Of course not. He knows you're an idiot. Thank God. This is working out so very well. To say the least. Have you no respect for people's privacy? Oh! But it's time now for the public to learn the truth. The world must never know the secret of Reginald Kincaid. Sherlock Holmes belongs to the whole world. Michael Caine and Ben Kingsley in Without a Clue, England's best-kept secret. Shh. This and other fine upcoming Orion films can be seen exclusively on the movie channel in the future. The first movie that I saw ever, I think, was Dumbo. I saw that at the drive-in movie. And I can remember every detail of it, really, to tell you the truth. Especially wearing my pajamas outside. That was really fun, you know? I liked the drive-in approach anyway, because the whole idea of putting on your pajamas and then leaving your house, I just thought was really, well, something that's carried over, you know, in my later life in a lot of different aspects. It was a time of violence. I want that beauty here with me. A time of passion. If you yield only to a conqueror, 
then prepare to be conquered. It was a time for legends. Brigitte Nielsen, Arnold Schwarzenegger, in Red Sonja, playing tonight on the Movie Channel. Ferris Bueller's taking the day off. How could I possibly be expected to handle school on a day like this? He gives good kids bad ideas. They think he's a righteous dude. You thought we wouldn't have any fun. Shame on you. Matthew Broderick, Jennifer Grey, in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, playing Monday on the Movie Channel. This action attraction is rated PG-13 by the Motion Picture Association of America.